How's it going, PD team? Today we're going to be building a sketch material using the new Redshift Toon Shader and creating animation using the time node from our previous video. Link is in the description below. I'd watch that first. From there, you can take the new time node and make it a preset. This video is short and easy. At the current iteration of the Redshift Toon Shader, it is not a replacement for the standard render sketch and tune due to the lack of line overshoot and offset properties. So, if this was a professional project, I'd use the take system to layer in some old sketch lines for creating underdrawings and loose line work. We'll be looking at the tone map pattern, which was just recently added, to get randomization to our sketch per frame without keyframes. We'll be adding subtle variations to the scale, position, and angle of the sketch on each frame. We'll be also building our sketch up like in real life with layer stacking, simulating what you get with different pencil hardnesses. I've included a lot of tips on the way. So with that being said, let's dive in. Here's the network that builds up this shader. It starts off with the time node that we created in the previous video, shoots a jitter, and randomizes the position, scale, and rotation of our tone map. We then blend it together with the three types of sketch lines. We add a bump to give paper simulation, and then we finish it up with some line work right here and add variation using the change range and noise. So let's build this thing. So here we are, we've replaced the demo sketch material and placed a new sketch material. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to materials and select tune. Make sure you're in the Redshift render to do this and get access, and you're gonna just do that. And then we're gonna apply it to the material. I've already applied it and off we go. And here's what we get so far. So our tune shader looks something like this. And what I do is I first go in here and I just disable the previews and I'm going to space this out. So I'm going to take this, bring our contour down here, our tone map, to give us a little bit more working space. So let's talk about the tone map. So the way this works is this tone map works like a posterize effect. And to get the tone map sketch effect, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up the tone map and you'll see tone map pattern. What you wanna do is you wanna place this before like so. And then we're going to take our tone map gradient, plug it into the intensity override, and then plug it into the tone map. And then you can see it's working. So let me come in closer and you can see we get dots. That's the default and that's called half tones. So we're going to change it to crosshatch. I'm going to scale these up so we can see them better. And it's not producing the results we want. And so let's make some adjustments. So I'm going to first reduce the black value. I'm going to get rid of one of these, bring our black value to something like 60, 75 and 85, 86. And now you can see we get some sketch lines. Now we're gonna be stacking these up. So you actually wanna go pretty light with these because when we multiply the other layers, it's gonna naturally darken the shot. So I wanna space these out evenly. So I'll add one here at the end and hold shift and then select and then right click in here and say distribute selected knots evenly. So this is gonna be our base. And let's give us some space here and we're going to add a layer node. And with the color layer, what we want to do is we want to set our base to white so that we can blend and pull the values down like this to reveal the white paper underneath. So we'll add it into layer one. We're going to leave the base layer unchanged, drag it into the tone map, and then you should have the same thing. So this first one is going to be our base. I've already got the time node already brought in here. So go ahead and drag yours in. So what we want to do is we want to get some variation in here. So what we're going to bring in is a jitter and this jitter node without getting into too much detail allows us to spit us out color variations jitters on the float values and also on integers which are whole numbers we're going to use the integer to shift and change the tone map patterns offset so i'm going to add offset x y and rotation and scale so our biggest we want this to be for this scene size is between two and three so we're going to randomize the two to three values using the float and then the offset we're going to use the whole numbers and same with rotation, the integers. So I'm going to take my tone map and just bring it down here out of the way. And before we plug in our values here, we need to change the range. So we're going to do a change range and we're going to do the float change range. And we'll start off with doing uh, offset. So we're going to do whole numbers and I want to offset this by 100 units. So the output will be 100. So zero to 100. And our initial values are going to be float values. So we'll take float, put it in the input. We'll call this scale. We don't need our input values here. So we'll clean those up and then we'll add it into the offset. And then I can command drag the input here and just duplicate it. So next, what we're going to do is in the jitter, it's looking at the name ID. We want to use user ID and that frees up this user data. So if I click here, 
This is what we're going to be animating to create the variation. Now we're going to be doing the float variation here. So I'm going to just do zero to one and you'll see now when I check the next value, it's going to shift like so put it back to zero. So what we're going to do is we don't need the color jitter input. So I'm going to get rid of that, bring in our time node here. And with our time node, I'm going to leave it on end time of 90. So every 90 frames, it's going to repeat, which is fine. And our max value is 200. So I'll just leave it like this. And now if I bring up my timeline here and step between frames, you can see it's randomizing. So I want some subtle rotation. So I'm going to just take this rotation, duplicate it and make the rotation value. And we'll use whole numbers. Actually, we can use float value. We'll plug in a rotation here. I'm going to change the order by clicking and dragging. And so we want this to be subtle. So we'll do like maybe 10 degrees of rotation. So now when we come forward, we get subtle rotation values. And I can go actually a little less than that. I'll go to six. Lastly, we want to add and this one is supposed to be um, offset so I'll just duplicate this for scale call this one offset and our scale we want to go between let's say two and a half and three we don't want too much variation so I'll change this to 2.5 and three bring in our integer here our float value and there we go so we have scale offset and rotation you want to make sure you name your layers. It'll make it much easier. So I'm going to leave these open because we're going to duplicate them. We'll plug in our tone map right here. This looks good. And if you want to lighten this up, what we can do is we can add to it a ramp for quick changing. And I'll do the scalar ramp and I'll just drag it on the line, plug it in, call it levels. I like taking my spline preset and using linear. And then I can just bring this up like so to kind of offset them, make them lighter. So there's our first layer. We're gonna take this whole group here and we're gonna duplicate it. Call this mid. We'll plug it into layer two. We don't need the masks, so I'm gonna delete those. And while we're at it, we'll enable and I'll disable the first one so we can see what's going on here. And with this one, all I have to do to get variation is come into the change range here and do 3.25 and four. So we get bigger lines and our offset, we'll just change it to something like 250. So it's different. And our angle of rotation, I want a little bit more. So I'm going to do 10. And then in our levels, what we can do is we can take this and add points to give us just, we want it kind of light. So somewhere around there. So we're just getting those darker lines in there that are looser. And we'll plug in our user data again into the time like so. And then we'll do one more of these. We'll bring up layer three, add the input by control clicking the dot. And with this one, we want the scale to be 4.5 and five. So big sketches. And then we're going to take and try to get this contrast to be stronger. So we're just getting those big sketches in there. We'll plug in our jitter time node into our user data. And with this one, we're going to just do the offset. We'll do something like 50. So it doesn't move as much in the rotation. We want something like 14 degrees of rotation because these are going to be really loose. I can come in here and clean this up. So now I can bring these closer together. And this last one we'll call our large. So there we go. Now let's layer these all up, see how it looks. And we'll set the blend modes to multiply to all of them. And you can see we're just a little too dark. So what we can do is we can come in here and just bring these down. And you can play with these values. So let's see if we can see the last one. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is now that we have our sketch and you can go in and play with these values to get better results is we're gonna add some noise to the bump map, which will create some uh, paper textures. So we're gonna add a noise and use the max on noise. And we're also gonna use a bump map. We'll set this to 0.5. Actually, let's do 0.75. Well, the noise type we're going to use, blistered turbulence, which will add more octaves to the standard noise. And then we're going to add it to the input and add it to the bump map. And you can see what it does is it gives us our bump in the texture here and it'll simulate like paper. So this value of scale will be up to you what you use, but the effect is subtle. It just adds variation to it. Next thing we're going to do, let's tidy this up. Our reflection, I'm going to set to 0.35 so we get a bigger highlight. Our line work isn't that gray right now so what we can do is it, it's too intense so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to the colors here and just bring up the value to something like 15 or 16 and then let's add some variation so what we need is a noise 
And what we could do is we can load in this thickness modifier. So if we adjust this thickness modifier, you can see it reduces the scale based off of how big this is. So it takes our thickness and scales it. So it's already loaded up in here and it's a zero to one. And that's what our noise is. So what we can do is we don't need to transform it and we'll just add it in here. What I want to do is I want to add variation to the noise. I just soloed it. We'll go in here to blistered turbulence and I'm going to bring down the scale and see how that looks. And you can see it gave us a more sketched line and it's kind of lighter, which is what we want. But then we have these internal line works that we need to adjust. Before I go and adjust the thickness though, what I want to do is I want to change this angle threshold so we're not getting too much line work. And this value is going to be unique to your project. So I'll do something like 25. But I also want lines down here. And the way you fix that is we can bring down this threshold here. So you can see if I bring it to zero, it goes crazy. So this value you're going to set to whatever looks good for yours. I just want a couple little lines in here and then we can adjust the angle to offset that. So I'll set this to 45. So now we have line work that looks better. So we're not, we're getting a little bit of sketch lines down here, but we're not adding too much into the folds. So let's go ahead and add this as well into our thickness modifier of our internal material. What we can do is we can come in here and we can add a little bit of contrast to our noise. I like whole numbers. So I'm going to do 0.5 and I'm going to bring up the thickness just a little bit and then back it off. So let's just go here to where it looks good. So for my project, it looks like three is good. Somewhere around three or three and a half. There we go. We can back off the brightness of the internal sketch. So maybe 25, something like that. So 30, 35 looks good for my project. Next, if you examine still life drawings, like nude drawings like this, what they'll usually do is they'll have an underlying drawing of where these shadows are. And we can simulate an outline of this shadow. And it's quite easy. What we'll do is we'll come in here to the tone map right here. And I'm going to do the base one. So I'm going to zero this out, turn these off first so I can see just that. Actually, let's keep it on so we get more contrast. What we want to do is we want to add a line right here. So what we can do is we can go to our tone map and then add. A, this is our darkest shadow here. So if we click right here, it adds the same color really close. And then we can take this value and just bring it down and I'll go black so you can see what it's doing. And we're not getting results in here because the values are, are so light. So what we can do is we can see which one's contributing the most. And I think it's, we'll try on this one, the last one. So go to the tone map, add a point. There we go. Now we're starting to get the line. There it goes. So for mine, it was the middle one that's contributing. And you can see we're getting a line right here where the shadow starts. The next thing I want to do is I want a gradient where this shadow comes in. I don't want this hard edge. So what I can do is I can come in here to these after the shadow. So this is our shadow and come in here and say linear, linear and linear. So it softens that up. And I'm going to do that to all three here. I'm going to add a point, make this one dark, change the shadow to linear, linear and linear. So we're softening that edge up. And we'll do it to the last one here and I can select all of these here like that say linear so we've softened it up and now you can see we get that sketch line going on the edge and then we can always go back into our levels here of any one of these and make our adjustments so if we want more contrast we can just come in here like this and add it in so somewhere around there looks good and with pencil sketches you don't want it too dark so let's check our results so far so it looks like our loose overdrawing is really quite too big so we can always adjust that quite easily with going to the scale of our biggest one so let's make sure it's the largest one that's causing that. Yes. So we'll come in here to our large one and we'll bring this down to three and three and a half. We'll step through this. So because I'm working on a smaller layout, it's a lot harder to see this. And so you're going to want your line work to be pretty muted. So our scale, that one's good. We'll bring this down to 2.5 and 2 and 1 and 1 1.5. There we go. You can see now I'm playing it. Now, one thing you'll notice, and your pencil sketches could be smaller. This, these are still too big, but that's fine. What we can do is we can offset and fake the sketch because right now it's too smooth, like the line work doesn't jump around. So one little trick I like doing is I'm going to add a displacer, load up the properties here. And with the displacer, what we're going to do is we're going to load up a noise, set the animation speed to something like two, so it evolves. We're going to add a blistered turbulence. So that's basically like noise with more octaves, more 
more detail. We're going to place it inside and you can see I already had one, so I'll delete it. But it looks like garbage right now. And what we'll do is we're going to change the scale, something like 200. Your value for the scale is going to be much different. Let's do 300. There we go. So 300 looks good for mine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down to like 0.75. And all it's going to do, you can see before and after, it's going to just add a little bit of wiggle to the line work. Now, if I go to one, I found that it becomes a little too intense. You want it subtle and it depends on your scene scale and how much detail is in your geometry. But now if I step through this, also, you're going to notice if you have a lot of geometry, which this one does, it was a scan. There's a lot of geometry. It significantly slows down the viewport playback. So what you can do is you can see the difference between the frames here. It's almost playing in real time. Whereas if I turn on the displacer, it really slows things down. But you can see we get some nice variation when it jumps. So you're going to see it in those highlights on those edges and on the line work. It adds a nice little touch. So that's all I wanted to cover today in this sketch shader. Shader could use a little bit more detail and finesse um, and that's something that you guys can do on your own uh, i just wanted to show you some techniques that you can use to create some randomness and some visual interest in your sketch shader using the new tune shader and the new tone pattern that was just added so extremely powerful so that's it i hope you found this useful thanks so much don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content thanks for your support